Hey everyone, Cody here from the Protocase team. Today I'm going to talk about different bend options in SolidWorks and how they affect your design. So when you're designing sheet metal in SolidWorks, there are many different features available to use. We've gone over quite a few of these in the past, including move face and end condition. We've got links to those videos below in the description. But today, I wanted to talk specifically about the different types of flange positions. Flanges are a huge part of sheet metal design. They are pieces of your sheet metal design that are typically bent. Flanges can be bent to a wide variety of different angles. To create a flange on your part, you would use the edge flange feature. This will allow you to grab an edge and pull off a piece of material at any angle that you wish. The positioning of this flange relative to the rest of your part is controlled through different options called flange positions. So we found in our testing that the safest and more stable options to use are the first and second flange options. So the first flange option is called material inside. We are using 90 degree flanges for this example, so when you pull a 90 degree flange off your edge, the top face of that flange will never go past the edge from which you chose it from. The material remains inside that top boundary. The second flange option is called material outside. This pulls your flange off at exactly the value of the material thickness above the edge of the part as you can see here. The top of this flange will always remain within a material thickness's value from that edge. So after these two bend options, it starts to get a little bit tricky. We don't typically recommend using the third bend option and I'll explain why. This bend option is called bend outside and what it does is it will offset the top of your flange by the value of the specified bend radius in your design. You can check the value of your bend radius by using either the measure tool or right clicking on the sheet metal feature in your tree. So why is this bend option an issue? Well, the main reason is that due to bending constraints, our engineering team may have to slightly adjust this bend radius to match the profile of the tool we need to use. We'll typically always try and keep the radius specified in your model, and if it does change, we will inform you of this during the e-drawings approval process. So let's walk through an example. If your design has a bend radius of 40 thousandths of an inch and the third bend option is being used, the top of that flange is now offset by that amount. But what happens if we need to update the bend radius of the part? to say 65 thousandths of an inch. Well now your flange is no longer in that original position, it is now shifted up by 65 thousandths of an inch instead of 40. This is exactly why this can be an issue. But our engineering team has preventatives in place to catch these types of discrepancies, mainly by creating what we call a reference part from your submitted files. We would overlay these parts on top of each other and study them to make sure everything matches before we send them off for approval. But I wanted to still cover third bend position today because if you avoid using it in your design, it will ensure our engineering and design services team doesn't have to complete this extra step of adjusting your design and getting your approval of this adjustment. So in the end, by avoiding the third bend position altogether, it's a small way to ensure we process your design as quickly as possible. Because we know that for many of you, time is of the essence and we want to get your parts into our manufacturing facilities as fast as we can. So thanks very much for watching this week's Proto Tech Tip guys, and we'll see you back here next week for another one.